in the past and I can see all the mountains because we're sitting on top of this this part of the Weld County that you can see everything and the storm flies right over us gives me about 10 drops of rain and leaves and there's a reason God tells you not to fear and to leave it to him so the other night also we're sitting there and we hear eh, 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 eh. what is that that's the emergency call right on your phone and it says guess what you are being prepared to get three inch hail and not one piece of hail came down at our place not one piece but as soon as I heard it I prayed to God let this pass over us well my brother wasn't so fortunate he didn't pray and Commerce City got nailed now that doesn't mean God's not gonna let the hailstorm hit you does it sometimes we have to go through strife right but if you're prepared for the storm and you leave it to God isn't it much better so look at this guy's head what do you think does that look like fun or does it look like he's just going nuts this is how half our society is today because they have no belief in God at all and they let the pressures of the world get to them and they let this thing of war and all this stuff take them to a place that they cannot deal with it and the next step is suicide the next step is dropping out of the world the next step is homelessness the next step is all these things that the normal person doesn't want well guess what all you have to do is ask God to come and take care of all these things but you have to ask he says ask so it says the battle inside do we all have a battle inside so Cora was telling a story of the main preacher for Red Rocks. He brought Red Rocks Co Red Rock College, geez Louise, Red Rocks Chapel up in Colorado and a bunch of other places. And they were earning eight million dollars a month as a church. Eight million dollars a month. And all of a sudden he bowed out. He took off. He needed to go on a hiatus and they couldn't figure out why so when he came back he told them why he said I was in depression my life was turned upside down why didn't he hand it over to God he had preached all these things he knew to ask God to take these things from him and when he finally did guess what God did he took them from him and he returned and now he's got this great testimony and the reason I bring this up is because we don't hear any testimonies in this church how come we are not doing testimonies here if any of you want to give your testimony how you came to Christ please do it those are to be celebrated so <clears throat> so as I'm looking at this guy's head I'm picturing downtown Denver in the apocalypse don't you all the high skyscrapers and stuff just going down and and then you would know what Israel is like when they have bombs flying over their wall all day long do they fear they go about their normal business because guess what they've gotten used to it but that doesn't make it right pray for Israel so in James 4 it says where do wars and fights come from among you so we have this ability when we hear something we're ready to go to war right we're ready to step out and to tackle it and to go after it even if we don't even know what it is because we don't sit and listen we don't stop so it says do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members how many of us want something so bad that we're willing to go to war to get it so what the United States is doing right now 
without our permission, they're going to war to make profit. You lust and do not have, you murder and covet and cannot obtain. How many people in America covet what someone else has? How many of them look and go, I want, I need, I desire? Listen, there's nothing wrong with having things as long as you don't covet them. There's nothing wrong with having this incredible, incredible thing as long as you do not covet to have it. Which means you desire just to go ahead and get it because you want to do something. Like, let's say go camping. So you go out and buy a camper. Okay? As long as you don't go buy the Taj Mahal to take up there to show to everybody else, you're okay. If you buy something to desire to show everybody else what you could afford, then you got a problem. So it says, you murder and covet and cannot obtain. Can you ever get what you fully desire if you want everything? So I'll give you an example that I learned of. Nicolas Cage is a movie star, and he wants everything. He literally desires everything he sees. He went to New Orleans to film a movie, and he wanted a mausoleum. So he bought a multi-million dollar mausoleum. And, uh, but he's broke. How do you buy a mausoleum when you're broke? Well, if you look up, look up Nicolas Cage and see how many movies he makes. See, he doesn't make what he used to because he wants to make so many movies just to stay on top of what he owes. But he's literally broke. And there's been many stars that have been this way. Well, there's many normal people that also have this same problem. Everything they see, they want, right? And so they go to get it. And today's world, how many of us can go out and just buy a house tomorrow and pay cash for it? Or even a car. When cars run $100,000, how many of us can walk in and plop down the money and say, see you later? So I remember the stories of my dad when he said he got out of the army and he went and bought a car in cash. Can you see someone from the army today going to the dealership and buying a car in cash? It's almost impossible, right? So we have people that are coveting other people because they're getting those items for free. Our government's handing out cars like candy right now. And they're handing out places to live like candy right now. And people are coveting that because they want it and they're not getting it. And they've been here their whole lives. We've got to be careful what we want and how we desire to get it. So it says, you fight in war, yet you do not have because what? You do not ask. What should you do before you want something? You should ask the Lord if it's okay to get it. You ask and do not receive because you ask. Uh-oh, this is the wrong version, Clara. How did we get back to that one? Wait one second. And it's not 1 through 61. That's really weird, too. It's 11 through 13. Or is 11 through 13 the other one, and this copied into here? Hmm, okay. Well, we're going to keep going with it. We'll see. <clears throat> we were playing around with slides last night, and it was late. And uh, I noticed some stuff, so we changed some stuff, and now it seems to be back in here. No, it's not. A miss shouldn't be in there. Oh, no, this is the other one. You're right. Never mind. Wait, say that again. You're right. Yep, I said you're right. <clears throat> See, she covets to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss, which means you would ask not quite right. I had to look these all up because I was like, I've never heard the word amiss. 
And it says that you may spend it on your pleasures. So is your pleasures getting to know the Lord or getting to get what you desire of this world? <clears throat> so it says, adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the, world's, uh, with the world is enmity, hostile with God? So if you love the world, you are hostile with God. Because he is to be loved, not this world. Now, God's the other way around in John 3, 16, when he says that he gave his only son for what? Because he loved what? The world. That doesn't mean this earth. That means you. You're his world. That's an incredible thing. He created all things, and he loves you. He doesn't say the animals. He doesn't say the earth. He says you. That's who he loves. Now it says, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity, hostile with God? Because the reason I reread that is, listen to this. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain... You think the scripture's wrong? So it says, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealousy. Jealously. But he gives more grace, therefore he says, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Have you ever went and bought something, and I'll use a house again as an example, and went, look what I did. Did you or did God give it to you? I know the house we live in today, God took away three times before I got it. And when I didn't want it anymore, God gave it to me. It was a lesson I had to learn not to go after something so strong and put God behind it. Thank God he did that for me and took it away in the beginning. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Let's see here. Desires, pleasures, members of the body, quarrels, battles, war. Do you remember being in school? It's been a while, right? Do you remember all the fights that happened in school over stupid things? Like you go to sit at the lunch table, hey, you can't sit there. My, that's, you know, we've we got a private issue here. This is reserved. But you know what? When I first came to church at Clear Creek, they had the elderly people here, some of them, had their little groups. And you couldn't sit with them. Unless you were part of that group. It was a strange thing. The only reason I know this is because my mom went to sit with them and they told her no. I was like, well, why are we going to this church then? Because she saw the hearts of other people. She saw the heart and the beating of a church that desired to start other churches and make them part of this community. Did you know Clear Creek Church chartered, started probably more churches than any other church around here? When you look up our records, it says this was the church that started all these churches, like Applewood and all these churches. That was started from here. From the elders that were here that trained those people to go out and start churches. What an amazing thing. What an amazing church. It is not foot and mouth disease that gets us in trouble. Well, I don't know. If you can do this, it might get you in trouble. Brock could do that. My spine would break. How many of us give the wrong advice when someone comes to us? 
See, don't give them your advice. Give them God's advice so that they know for sure it's correct. It is the motives behind the members. Then when lust hath conceived, it bring uh, forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. How do we know that? The garden. What do we know? They, can, they went ahead and got, got to the fruit that they weren't supposed to, the tree of life. And God said, guess what? It will bring you death sooner or later. And they were not meant to die. They were meant to live forever. Division comes from a war in the heart and mind. Have you ever sat there and just stewed on something and it keeps changing in your mind? Because you think it's going to get worse, so your mind actually starts to make up what it's going to be. And then the next day you get there and it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. So the devil puts these thoughts in our mind like it's going to be horrible, right? And then we get there and the people are like, hey, how you doing? They've completely forgot about it. They've completely moved on. Now, one of the hardest places you'll ever have is your work. Because <clears throat> there's more of this at work than there is any other place. Because you spend a lot of time at work, right? So there's only two places this is going to occur a ton. That's in your family life and at work. Your family life you're in control of, your work you're not. So when it happens at work, what do you do? You ask God to take it away to remove it. And guess what? You might start to see employees start to get other jobs, other places that are causing all these problems. And at first, it might actually be the ones that aren't causing the problems that are leaving because of the ones that are causing the problems. But sooner or later, God will get rid of those who are causing the problem if you keep praying. Or he will let you be an example to them so that they see to quit doing it. And sometimes we have to go through the suffering in order for that example to get through to those people. How many of you wished you could go to outer space? Just for a day to get rid of everything. Wouldn't it be cool to go up there and just yell once? Ah! Then come back? So it says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. <clears throat> have you ever seen the movie star? You pull up to their house and they have every car that's ever been produced that costs $300,000. And you walk in their house, they have a gymnasium, they have a basketball court, they have all these things. And they say, this is the house I created for myself, and then they sell it five years later because it's not good enough. See, the problem is, we have this ability to want more, 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 more. But if instead all you want is God, you want more of him. You want to be here more to desire him. And you will forget about the world. And you'll let him take care of that. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is of the world. Who is in control of the world? God's in control of you. But God's kind of let Satan run amok on this world. We have to remember that Satan's here running 100 miles an hour whispering in your ear, Hey, just one more car. Hey, you need a better house. Hey, you got to compete with the neighbors. <clears throat> you know what I found out? You ever lived in a um, homeowners association and everybody competes to have the best yard, the best camper, the best car, the best house on the block. Me and Claire never fit in there. We were always in trouble. 
I'm the one that had the orange fence because I needed to put up a new fence and it was going to take two weeks to do. And everybody else, you know, would just put it up right away. And I just didn't have time, so I put up the orange fence. Or I'd bring my camper and get in trouble for that. You have 48 hours to remove it. And I'm like, no, your rules actually say 72 hours. I'll get it out of here plenty of time. But the thing is, I didn't fit in a neighborhood like that because I didn't compete with everybody. I didn't fit in because guess what? I didn't go to their meetings. I didn't meet their little, you know, quarry of going to lunch with them and going to dinner with them and doing all the things they do. And you know why? Because I had a church life. And my church life is where I wanted to be. Not my homeowners association. Now, I did want to get to know my neighbors until I got to know them. And then I went, oh my gosh, this is crazy. You know, they're just competing with each other. I had a guy one time, he every Sunday would get out there and he would take and do this waxing of his car. Every Sunday. So one day I pulled up and I said, hey, what's going on, buddy? He goes, oh, I'll just get my car to look nice. I said, man, you ought to show up to church sometime. Church. He didn't know anything about church. But he knew how to wax a car. It was pretty. <laughs> I guess that's why my cars are always dirty. <laughs> For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. Someone give me an example of the Bible of tremendous pride. Come on, guys, you know your Bible. Just give me a name. So David had some pride. He had enough pride that he killed Uriah. He had enough pride that he took Uriah's wife. He had enough pride that he didn't, when it came to his family and to where God would tell him to just rest, he didn't take God's advice. But when he went to war, guess who he came to? He always came to God. And God always told him, go forth. God said that David had the heart that was like his in the beginning before he brought David in. So you're saying David was sinful? Is there one person in here that isn't? Have you killed anybody? Have you killed anybody? See, the thing is, what we need to understand is one sin is no greater than the other. Only humans think it's greater. See, the problem is, when we lie, we can get someone killed. Just as easy. We can make up a story, and someone can go kill that person because of our dumb story. But we would say that we're not guilty because we're not the ones that went and did it, right? When Nathan came to David and told him because David was so angry when he said, this one man took the only animal that this, this family had. Their only possession. And David said, we need to kill this man. And he said, it's you, David. So instead of David looking at Nathan and telling him he's wrong and that he's mistaken, he said, oh my God, and he wept to the Lord. That's what the Lord wants. He wants us to weep to him to get rid of all this junk <clears throat> and the world is passing away and the lust of it but he who does the will of God abides forever how many want that don't let me be the only one raising my hand <laughs> how to claim victory over the battle How many of you have played chess? <clears throat> it's a game of strategy, right? <clears throat> and it's a, it's a game where you have to um, make sure that you move the right person or the right thing on the board or guess what? They get taken, right? Each one gets taken off the board. Well, it's kind of the way the world works. You can be taken for not doing the right thing. 
you can be taken for making the wrong moves. You can be taken. Now, this isn't something God does. God doesn't just pluck people off, right? But you do it yourself to yourself when you don't come to the right battle and you don't find the right victory. So therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. So no doubt. No doubt. You cannot doubt when you do it. Now, I'm going to use my sister for an example real quick. It's a good one, don't worry. She went to work and they're playing this crazy music. And it's super loud. And it's nuts. And they always put the speaker on her table. So she prayed on the way to work that the, the system wouldn't work. She got there, it didn't work. And it's Bluetooth. But you got to believe it's not going to work. And they're all like, oh my gosh. So they spent all this time trying to fix it and finally got it fixed, right? <clears throat> but you got to believe it. Doesn't do you any good to ask if you're not going to believe it's going to be done. It just, it doesn't do you any good. Ah, here's the one that we corrected. <clears throat> I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. That's a Christian. When you're content with whatever happens. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to be, or to have plenty. Do we all know that? Especially in America, we have plenty of everything. We don't really need, because it's in front of us, right? Right? I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool to be content? Doesn't that sound like where you want to be? I want to read this again real quick, and we're just going to go through it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. What is that called? It's called joy. See, when you have joy in everything, you can be content. But you got to have joy in it. When you're hungry and you have joy in it, the hunger pains usually go away. When you didn't get what you wanted, if you have joy in that, because you know that it wasn't provided, you can still find joy in that. This is how we fight our battles as Christians. We raise our hands to the Lord and we tell him thanks for what we do have and what he has given us. And that he is by our side and he is carrying us when we need to be carried. And he is loving us and never forsaking us. That is how we fight our battles. See, you can think in the end times you're going to get out there and you're going to target practice people. But this is how you fight your battle. You ask the Lord to take you completely out of the situation to begin with. I love the 
promise because he's not facing us. He's just showing that, Lord, I am yours. I am yours. So I ran through this sermon as fast as I could because we were running late today. Do we have a song between communion or not? The communion song? Okay. So we're going to do the communion song. And um, we're going to pray real quick because I think I just started it. Um, We're going to pray real quick because I believe that we can change what is happening in Israel right now. We can give them their needs like we should, because God says that we should support his people in that nation. Dear Heavenly Lord God, we just uh, come to you today with heavy hearts. We ask you to shield Israel with your hands and to let the nations around them be amazed that their bombs cannot make it in. We ask you to shield the people from harm from these nations and even from some of the people within Israel. Lord God, we ask you that the United States does not back away but gives of all their needs. That the United States stays an ally and will never walk away from your people. Lord God, we ask that other nations start to step in and say no more. Quit going after these people. Quit going after this nation. Stop. Lord God, I also pray for America to turn its ways and to quit looking for its desires and pleasures. Lord, I'm as guilty as anybody else and I'll raise my hand. Forgive me. As there's things that I want of this world that I do not have. And sometimes I look at it in a way that I just want it without asking you if I should have it. So forgive me. I love you. You are my God. And I know I am your child. So as we get ready for today's communion, Lord God, I ask that you will touch upon the hearts of those in here today to give everything up to you. Joyfully come to you completely with their hearts and say that they are yours and that you are theirs. We do this in your name, in your name only, and all the people say, Amen.